So we're here at the Mark Forge Technology Day at HK3D. It's been a great day, great turnout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really good. Um, you know, people from all over different industries. Um, yeah, it shows that the interest in the technologies and the new products um, is, is really growing. Right. And what is the technology? Um, okay, so the core uh, offering for Mark Forged is, is an FDM-based um, plastic printing technology that uh, enables you to lay continuous uh, fibre reinforcements within your parts. Um, so that includes carbon fibre, Kevlar, fibreglass. Uh, materials and essentially enables you to build and create incredibly strong rigid parts um, using what is essentially a very traditional mm -hmm. FDM process. Mm -hmm. So maybe not just fit and function, maybe end user parts? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, so this increased strength um, and, and abrasion resistance, those kind of qualities really make these parts um, usable yeah, in, in end use um, uh, applications and environments. And what are the printers on show today? So yeah, we've got uh, the Mark II Enterprise, which um, is the top level of, of, of that particular um, form factor for the Mark Forge machines. Mm -hmm. um, that will run all of the fiber reinforcement materials and, and the nylon uh, plastic materials as well. Uh, there are some uh, other lower level models that will have restrictions on the, the types of fibers you can run in them, um, but essentially the same build volume uh, enabled in there. We've also got a Mark X machine, which has a bigger build volume. It also has a laser micrometer attached to it, so uh, we'll do um, scanning up to a one micron accuracy. Um, and then we've also been talking about the, the new Metal X products that we're expecting to be launched in, in September of this year, mm -hmm. um, which is a, um, a MIM uh, type te technology, um, but essentially using an FDM uh, layout process. Yeah, and that's what excites me as an engineer. The metal, the plastic's one thing, carbon fibres, but the metal technology. And you've also made, you're making it affordable to pretty much every engineer or design house, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so really what it enables you to do uh, in terms of the environmental kind of aspects of it, um, of, of um, the infrastructure required to run it. Uh, we have additive manufacturing powder technologies here, metal uh, laser powder technologies. Um, they need to be fully closed off, they need to be fully installed in a certain way and, 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 and kept separately. Um, these machines you can run in an office environment, essentially because the metal powder is encased in a, in a plastic polymer. Um, it's basically then run into the part as you would expect with an FDM, like with the FDM technologies that Mark Forge are currently running. Um, it's then um, debound, similar to MIM technologies, and then sintered down to its final state. Yes, if I'm uh, a UK SME, or maybe, maybe an OEM, it doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, why am I going to buy this metal technology? Uh, because it provides access to metal uh, printing. I mean, yeah, the, so the cost that, that we would kind of put onto a, say, a 100 by 100 uh, cube for a standard laser uh, machine, the machine itself would be around the 200K mark, plus the infrastructure, plus all of the other consumables, that, mm -hmm. and it's an expensive process, uh, an involved process. Um, this machine will basically, uh, comes as a kit for 105K all in, um, and will enable you to print um, near net shape metal parts, um, end use metal parts, uh, yeah, basically um, from that point. Um, with a build volume of, of roughly 200 mil um, uh, cubed. Okay, and a lot of these 3D printers from other manufacturers, you have to look at third party software, don't you? Whereas it all kind of in the package here, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, it's all part of the Mark Forge philosophy um, and, and workspace environment. So all of the printers use the same uh, software, which is cloud-based, browser-based software. And so you, you get the same functionality. So perhaps you've been running Mark Forge plastic printers already. You're used to that environment. The Metal X, the Metal Printer, will run in the same environment with some additional functionality when it's released. And I've had a short demo of the software. It's incredibly easy to use, isn't it? Yeah, it is really, really simple to use. Um, the technology itself is quite um, groundbreaking, quite disruptive in terms of you know the additive manufacturing uh, environment. Um, you know, being able to put continuous fiber within parts, um, it, you know, is quite a step forward. But the actual uh, interface is very intuitive. Um, obviously, there's depth there, so the more you get into it and the more you control you want over your parts, you're able to do that. Um, but essentially, green button printing is simple. So being able to put parts onto your build plate and and, and get them out. Um, of, the, of, the part, of the machine itself um, is a very simple process. And the same will be for the Metal X, which again is a, is a, is a massive change. Um, we're used to long lead times, long preparation for machines, especially preparing a machine for a print in a powder-based, laser-based technology can take up to a day. Um, this will be very, very uh, representative of the existing FDM technologies, so you know, a matter of, of, of minutes, essentially.
Yeah, the other point I like about the metal is the changeover times. I know the rollout, you're going to have more than around a dozen materials. Mm. It no longer takes two days to change a machine over, does it? No, that's right. Um, so at launch, the uh, 17.4 and um, that stainless steel will be, will be launched as a base material. There are additional materials that will come as well. But those materials essentially are in rod form. Um, we're expecting within a cartridge-based um, uh, feed mechanism. So essentially, when that material, when you want to change it across, literally lift that cartridge out, replace it with a new material. Um, obviously, the sintering uh, parameters will change on each material, um, but it's as simple as that. Um, obviously, again, that's a big change from what we're used to with, with powder-based uh, systems. So if we look at these brake levers, I'm presuming they're all different materials but the same component? Yeah, that's right. So this really gives you an indication of the, um, the types of materials that are available and, and I guess their uh, uh, usefulness in different applications. So it's a simple uh, brake lever. Um, I think this is actually off a of Ducati. Um, here we have it printed in a 50% infill, triangular infill with the nylon material. Um, obviously, as a, it's, it's not going to be too useful as a brake lever itself, um, but it shows the properties of, of, of that particular material. Um, what we have following on from that is, is the same nylon base plastic material. Um, this time we have uh, continuous fiberglass reinforcement throughout the part. So what we're doing is we're adding strength, rigidity to the part, and we're starting to see that actually that could be a prototype, it could be something that we can use for practical testing, um, and possibly even end use depending on the application of it. And finally, um, from the, the, the plastic side of things, we've got um, the onyx material. So onyx material is, is still a nylon-based plastic material that has chopped fibers strands within it, random orientated strands. Um, this is that material plus carbon fiber reinforcement throughout, so continuous fiber reinforcement. So that's um, as strong as a part you can get really from F any FDM how, technology. How, how would that compare to aluminium? Uh, yeah, so very favorably, yeah. So um, we can see that um, that essentially stands up uh, against aluminium uh, in terms of strength and, and, and load testing and, and those kind of things. So yeah, it's, it's very, very strong and, and, and durable. Um, finally, a different style of brake lever. Um, this is uh, a sample part from the, um, the Metal X machine. So again, the same process, it's still layering it layer by layer uh, in an FDM style. Um, what it's doing is um, it's, it's being able to do that because the powder material, the metal, 17.4 is being laid down within a, a plastic binder. What we then do is debind that in a wash system uh, after the printing process and then sinter it. The sintering process reduces the size by about 20% um, and removes all of the, uh, the plastic polymer, leaving only the, uh, the metal itself, which again uh, is absolutely uh, comparable to, um, to kind of bar stock uh, 17.4 stainless steel. It also allows us to um, embed um, internal geometries within the part and within the shape itself. If we were to do that, we could do that with a, a powder-based system, but what it would do is encapsulate the powder within the part, so we would not really be making any uh, weight, uh, weight saving. Uh, we wouldn't be laser sintering those particular areas, but it wouldn't really help us. Whereas with this, we actually uh, save weight, and we produce a part that we couldn't produce with any other technology in any other way.